So I'm out at the Whitewater Center in Charlotte, North Carolina on this bike. Yes, on a drop bar, gravel, or cyclocross bike out at a mountain bike park. Now when I showed up with this bike, there were a few people in the parking lot that were like, you're crazy. Why do you have this bike? Like, it's gonna beat the crap out of you. It's not gonna be fun. And they're not 100% wrong, but this is probably one of the most fun bikes that I have rode ever. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing three things that I think you should focus on if you're going to try to ride a gravel or cyclocross bike on a mountain bike trail. The first one is tires and tire pressure. The second one is bike geometry and setup. And the third one is the drivetrain. These are things that I have learned over the years that I've rode this bike, and so let's get into it. So tire pressures and tires. The reason why I made it the number one point is because to me it's probably the most important. You don't have any suspension on this bike. You've got a rigid front fork and no suspension in the rear, and so your tires and tire pressure is really your only suspension. And so with that, you've got to dial in the tire pressure. And so a few of the ways that I try to get people to learn how to do it is to drop off a curb onto the pavement. If the tire is very stiff, you could probably let some tire, you could let some pressure out. If the tire uh, dings the rim, you need a little more tire pressure. So what you're trying to do is balance between uh, a pinch flat and a super rough ride and so with that what I'll do is I put a little too much tire uh, I pump a little too much air in the tire and I go to the trail and I try to hit a few roots to see if I'm going to get rim dings where the actual rock or root will hit the rim and if it doesn't I will bleed a little tire pressure out now today when I started I had way too much tire pressure and so the bike was a very rough ride for the first little bit. I lowered out some tire pressure and it was a much smoother ride. So get the tire pressure dialed in. The next is I've got the WTB cross bosses on here. They've been good tires. I don't recommend them. I actually recommend the WTB Nano 40s if you've got a traditional road bike uh, rear uh, chain stay setup, meaning that the chain stays aren't super wide or your front fork is not super wide and the Nano 40s are really good. They give you a lot of um, extra suspension uh, or extra tire wall to compress to make it a little more comfortable ride. I use those tires for many years and I had these cross bosses laying around and I put them back on and I just haven't bought other tires. So yeah, if you can put the biggest tire you can on it and enjoy the ride. Oh, by the way, there's a link right there uh, of a time that I took this on an extremely epic mountain bike trip. So number two is bike setup. And with this, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the seat. I lower the seat about an inch from my normal ride height when I ride this bike on the road. And the reason why I do that is because I want to lower my center of gravity because if I'm up really high and I was to go over a drop, I potentially could go over the bars. And by lowering the seat, it allows you to get your butt off of the back of the bike quicker, and which then means that your center of gravity is moved behind the crank, which then means it's harder for you to pitch the bike over the bars. Now, the next thing is I also have my stem or my handlebars slammed, so I've got them lower. And the reason for that again is just to lower my center of gravity. In the three plus years that I've rode this bike, I can only recall one time going over the bars because of, um, I think I just ran out of talent, honestly. So I went really, really hard and there was a rock and I caught it and the tire just caught just a little bit. I grabbed a little too much front brake and went over the bars. But with this setup, I have not went over the bars since, and I don't, I'm not getting full leg power, but 
I also am using my legs and my forearms as suspension. And so I sit on the seat very rarely. And when I do sit on the seat, it's really to climb hills and all of the rest of the time I'm off the seat and using my legs and my forearms as suspension going over rocks, roots, and dips in the trail. So that's how I've got this Kona Private Jake set up. So let's get into drivetrain. Dang it. Oh, I dropped a chain. So drivetrain. On this Kona Private Jake, I have a SRAM drivetrain set up on it. And it's a SRAM rival. It's the cheapest system that they make, but it's done me very, very well. And the front tooth is a 40 tooth, and the back is an 11 speed. I can't remember what it is, but I think it's like a 10 by 32. Let's just say that's what it is. But that's the setup on it. The front tooth... The front ring is a locking tooth setup, meaning that every other tooth is larger and smaller, so that way it locks the chain ring arm. You want that when you have a one by system because you may sling the chain off on a dip. Now, to really help with that is to get a clutch rear derailleur. And most cyclocross or gravel bikes have clutch rear derailleurs. This bike had it on it until I went through some mud and ripped it straight off, and now I have a SRAM Force rear derailleur. It's a non-clutched rear derailleur, and so I do drop chains a little bit more, but I'm learning how to navigate not dropping chains and working around it. But to make it easier, just get a clutch uh, rear derailleur from SRAM, and I don't think I ever dropped a chain uh, with a clutch rear derailleur. It keeps the chain tight when there's a dip or a bounce. So, three things, tire pressure, uh, bike geometry and setup, and also drivetrain. One last thing on this Kona Private Jake is it has rear uh, modular dropouts, meaning the dropout can move forward and backwards about an inch. And so what that means is you can shorten the wheelbase or lengthen the wheelbase. Currently at this moment, I've got it a short wheelbase and it's super nimble. A lot of people that do gravel sh stretch out the wheelbase to make it more stable, but honestly, I have really enjoyed it being super close and it's super nimble and I really enjoy it. So, before I wrap up this video, I want to tell you about a website. It's called Rodeo Labs. They do this riding mountain bikes in crazy terrain so much better than I ever could. I highly recommend you checking them out if you want a bike to do this. They have a bike called the Flanimal, which one day I will own, and they also have another bike called the Trail Donkey, which is an incredible bike. And so, with that, they have rims, and they have forks, and they have a fork called the Spork, which takes a massive, beefy front tire. They can do a 27 and a half by I think 2.4 uh, mountain bike tire on their trail donkey bike. So it's literally a mountain bike with road geometry. And so it's a very, very cool company. I highly recommend you checking out their Instagram, checking out their website. They do beautiful builds, uh, complete turnkey solutions. And if you're really fancy, you can get a custom designed bike by the man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. Fitzgerald. But seriously, the bikes are incredible. I will have one one day. I bought my Kona Private Jake right when they released the Flanimal. And yeah, I'm being good steward of my money. And uh, yeah, I'll have one one day. But until then, that's all for this video. If you liked it, you can hit the like button. If you didn't like it, you can hit the like button. You can subscribe as well. And you can see me next Thursday for another video. We may do, be doing something totally different. And uh, yeah, check back. Adios.